Good morning. Welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. At 10 o'clock each weekday, a staff member or volunteer will be here to share an object from our collection. So join us for each new conversation. My name is Betty and I'm a museum docent. When archaeologists excavate a site, they aren't looking as much for valuable treasure as they are for a better understanding of past human life and customs. When we think of Egypt, we often think of the golden treasures of King Tut. But today, I want to share with you the most common of Egyptian grave goods, the Ushabti, sometimes pronounced Shabti or Shawabti. Even if you weren't a pharaoh, every Egyptian wanted Ushabti in his or her grave. But why? It all traces back to the Egyptian view of the afterlife. Egyptians considered preservation of the body to be vital. If you didn't have an intact body, you couldn't be admitted to paradise. Hence, the early Hushabti were meant to represent the owner. If something happened to his or her mummy, the Hushabti could act as a surrogate. That is why Hushabti are always mummy form, in the shape of a mummy. But what was the afterlife like? If you pass the final judgment by the gods, you can expect to live out eternity in the field of reeds. While it was considered paradise, Egyptians believed the field of reeds was more like a mirror image of life on earth, not like we might consider heaven. In other words, you'd have to work. Later, around 1500 BCE, the role of the Ushabti changed. They became servants who could do your chores. After all, it wouldn't be paradise if you had to work. Any well-equipped Egyptian wanted to be buried with 365 Ushabti, one for each day of the year, plus 36 to be overseers. In the afterlife, the owner simply had to recite the magic spell and the Ushabti would come to life and do his work for that day. This may be how the little figures got their name. Ushabti may be translated answerer because they could answer their master's call. Temple workshops churned out many types of Ushabti for the humble to the upscale customer. Ushabti have been found in graves of all classes with the usual issue of income inequality. If you were richer, you could afford more Ushabti and of a better quality. The more Ushabti you had, the more leisure you'd have in the afterlife. We have two Ushabti on display at camp from two different sets. The first is made of wood with painted decoration. It dates to about 1300 to 1100 BCE. Only in the dry climate of Egypt could a wooden artifact like this survive over 3000 years. The second Ushabti is made of faience, a glass and ceramic mixture that turns to a lustrous blue or green when fired. It is from Abydos and is from about 1000 BCE. So my question today is this. If you could have an Ushabti for the day, what work would you have it do for you? Take out the garbage? Do the laundry? Finish your homework? Share your thoughts in the chat below.